before I jump into the situation in California, the whole reason why I'm doing these series of videos, I like to touch bases first on the RFID chip implant. For those of you that are familiar with it, as you know, if it's done voluntarily, it's not as invasive simply because you know what you can and cannot do. There's some sort of limitation, so to speak. But when it's done involuntarily, it's a totally different case and scenario. In my case, it was done involuntarily. It's invasive and it's actually quite disturbing. Um, for those of you that are familiar with it, just going back a little bit, um, the chip implant is something like a um, human augmentation. Now, in the beginning, this, this situation in California, this started March, the first or second week of March this year, and it's now July 2nd. Now, I didn't find out that there was a chip implant until recently. It would have been probably around the middle or end of April, the middle of April, um, shortly after I returned home to Akron, Ohio. Now, when I got home, a few things started to change. First, the first thing that I noticed was my bowel movements. They changed, they were able to lock up my bowels. Um, I take apple cider vinegar every day, sometimes two, maybe three times a day. So I normally have a more than normal bowel movement. I went from having a more than normal bowel movement to having barely a bowel movement at all. I understand that's a little bit too, mi too much information, so I'll leave that there. Um, the second thing that I noticed was my um, sinuses or nasal cavity. It um, dried out completely. When I would blow my nose, not only was there um, no little green things, but there, was, there wasn't any mucus either. So I would blow my nose. I'm one of those people that blows my nose every morning nothing comes out it's just a dry spell so that kind of altered my smelling in a way um i had an incision and or a hole in um my upper on my upper right side and that hole started to close up which was really alarming um as soon as i made mention of it and started complaining about it to my mother it opened right back up. Now the hole itself had been there for over 10 years. It's not, it's not new at all. So it was really odd to um, see that change taking place or notice that change taking place. Something else that's necessary to know is that they were able to give me shots or shot-like sensations um, remotely because obviously it's not taking place like here in front of me in person, but I would feel these shot-like sensations all over my body. Now, originally, following these shot-like sensations, death was supposed to occur, but the odd thing about it is, with the implant itself, you can, you can cause death remotely. So it was just odd that um, in this case, they um they gave it a time frame, a specific time frame, but all of that'll make sense later on because it is, has quite a few plot twists. Now, I originally read up on this chip four years ago. When I read up on it originally, I thought it was really invasive, and I said, "There's no way that's going to ever happen in America. There's no way the people would go for that," which stands to be true in some way shape or form because it hasn't been implemented here in the u.s there's been talks about it for a long time but it hasn't been implemented but that there's complete and total surveillance um i have no privacy like none whatsoever 24 7 i'm being watched i know it seems like an exaggeration but it's not one at all um there in the beginning there was a couple of people assigned to watch me. However, now there's way more. So, 
because it's radio frequency, I can pick up their conversation. And it's nonstop dialogue all day long. Um, there's times where it causes a great inconvenience because you're trying to pay attention to what the enemy is saying. And, you know, you're in the middle of a um, dialogue, like, in person, an actual dialogue, and trying to listen to them, too, because in my case, it got really ugly. Because they couldn't get me to willingly come to them, they started trying all different sorts of stuff, and I'll get into that in some of the other videos. During this conversation, during this dialogue, or the, the conversation that takes place with the radio frequency, um, it is never pleasant or helpful dialogue with these individuals in my case because um, their whole intention is to to execute their mission which started off being to kill me later on changed into getting me to willingly come over and be with a man that I don't know which later on changed to dying and sacrificing myself so that I could be someone else's wife in the next life in their next life. And that only happened, that only changed in the way that it did because once they realized that I had an anointing over my life and that I wouldn't be going anywhere other than heaven, they had to change their plot because they knew that if they killed me, neither, one, neither side would get me because they have two sides. Neither side would get me if they killed me. So they've been attempting to get me to willingly come in real life here on earth. Now, when, since they can't get me to come, outside of all the threats, they've been going to um, the most extremes, such as voodoo, witchcraft, something I do not believe in. But they've been making attempts in my sleep, and I feel the attempts, and I've had some very weird and strange experiences as a result. But back to the chip, it breaks down some of the body's normal de normal defenses and um, makes you more vulnerable, um, violates your privacy, violates you as a human being, and um, makes things possible that should not be possible, like creating, like giving you um, electric mandated impulses in your chest region, which normally is supposed to induce a cell which is normally supposed to induce a heart attack, but it appears to be self-induced. So, if you should go to the hospital behind it, it looks like an accident, an absolute accident. Now, whenever I would feel these chest pains taking place, I would go to the hospital, but no sooner than I get there and they hook me up and give me an EKG, nothing's going on, nothing shows. And it's stuff like that. They're able to make things appear or take place that quick and then it appears that nothing happens nothing has happened at all we touched on the conversation on being able to pick up their conversation and um, occasionally having exchanges with them I didn't tell you how bad it gets these people because I, I spoke on, you know, them wanting to get you to comply, to, um, to come to them, to be with them, to comply. And when I say that they'll go to any limbs to get you to comply, they will go to any limbs. These people have threatened me with every disease that there is. They threaten to give people that don't have anything, STDs, blood clots, diabetes, heart disease. And that's supposed to be what these shot-like sensations are. However, in most cases, they're placebo. Uh, it's a placebo effect. Because all of my blood work has been coming back negative. I'm not showing up anything negative. I mean positive. So, but my, my thing is, if they could, they would. Because I'm not their normal candidate. Their normal candidate is um, addicted to some type of drug, which means that their immune system has already been broken down in many ways. 
so this stuff takes place and manifests a whole lot quicker and if not a whole lot quicker um i don't want to say that the disease manifests a whole lot quicker i want to say that um death occurs a whole lot quicker because they kill people like this all the time and they're so openly unapologetic and unashamed and just not shameful about it at all they're so used to not being caught that they openly talk about this stuff they tell me everything about this inhumane operation so there's cases where they do this to women that are on drugs that they even sell because they traffic women as well so once they sell the women the guy may have them for a month or two before she dies lastly on the um, RFID chip implant um, it is difficult to get rid of so look say for instance back to the voluntary and involuntary scenario okay if it's voluntary you'll have some type of paperwork on it and if you don't have the paperwork on it yourself you'll be able to obtain it from your physician whoever put it in whoever gave you the implant you'll be able to retrieve that information that paperwork from them so that you can get the chip removed is very necessary they won't do it without it now in my case when it's involuntary it's it, it gets really complicated because for one you're looked at as someone's property which causes a little bit of it can cause um, some some um, unapparent friction because no one wants to step on anyone's toes in that way if you get my drift so you can go and request to have the chip scanned and stuff like that but without the paperwork they're going to have to put in all types of other orders to get it removed now in my case when I brought it up <clears throat> most recently um, I had two doctors one doctor just tell me like okay that's what you want and he you know walked out but he didn't return another doctor came back and said and when this doctor showed up it was um, he was relatable he was very familiar unlike most um, people that in the healthcare field that I speak with about it but it's normally nurses but this doctor was familiar with the RF ID chip implant he knew um, the side effects like the things that were capable because of it in terms of hearing you know picking up conversation and stuff like that he was familiar with it all and he went from being on board with scanning for the implant to being completely against it so there came a time where after us going over everything with the implant he left the room I'm not sure if he made a phone call or had a discussion but he came back and he was completely out and when I asked him why he wouldn't remove the implant or why he wouldn't scan for it after making it clear that I was going to go to whatever height that I had to in order to get rid of it he um, told me that he wasn't going to scan for it because one I was anxious about it which I think anyone would be because it's really invasive and that's kind of what I explained to him so we had a short exchange about you know that being that should be considered normal you know if it happened to you when you think that that's normal to want to get it removed so after that he's the other thing that he said was that it was um he didn't want to expose me to more radiation it can't get any worse than what I've been going through when you see the amount of radiation that I'm exposed to on a daily basis you will not be able to believe how I don't have all types of other disease like God is truly with me and my mother because she's in the same household as me exposed to the same conditions on a daily basis
quick, just to caveat on the RFID chip implant. Imagine this chip implant being something like a channel. Okay, so that little scar right there would be the only scar on my body that I couldn't identify with anything. Like, I don't recall ever making it. It's a, it's a small slit cut. It, it's gabbed up some time ago, and um, it actually reopened <laughs> and scabbed up again in a weird way. But this all took place around the time that I was still in California. That's the only scar on my body that I cannot identify with. I don't know where it came from. And it's not unusual for the RFID chip to be put in your um, right forearm in the meaty part of it, which is where this happens to be. So, with that being said, imagine that chip being a channel. So, say there were me and four other people. There's five of us. We all have a chip. So now that's five different channels. Five different channels. When these men log in, they can pick which channel they're going to look at. Now they live stream my showers. Same as these other five women. I'm pretty sure they live stream their showers and probably some other stuff. They can't get me to comply to anything, but I have to shower. Okay, so the chip is a channel. Now, since we've established that, something else is necessary to know is the view. What I want you to do is picture a race car game. Because with this chip and this channel, I, I don't know if it has multiple views or I don't know if it's like a um, video game where you can change the view where you're viewing from the inside of the car, the outside of the car, the side, you know what I'm saying? Because these people have different angles. Sometimes it's almost as if they're viewing my experience through my eyes. And other times it's almost as if they're observing it from the outside. But they only have like so much range within, you know, it, it can't be any real distance. So to sum it up, if you're if I'm downstairs and my mother's upstairs, they don't have a clue what's going on upstairs because they can only see what's within this short range downstairs. 